Hi everyone, this lesson is on tropical sprue. So what is tropical sprue? Tropical sprue is a gastrointestinal condition that affects the small intestine and causes malabsorption. We're gonna get into more specific detail as to what happens and what types of nutrients are poorly absorbed later on in this lesson. Now, the exact cause of this condition is actually unknown, but it is likely infectious in nature. So there have been studies looking at whether this is due to a toxin, though it doesn't appear to be so. Studies have also looked at whether viruses can cause this, and there is perhaps some evidence that a viral infection can cause this, but it appears more likely that it is due to a bacterial infection. And as its name implies, it actually occurs in inhabitants of tropical areas or those who have traveled to tropical areas. So it is a condition that occurs in the tropics, but it doesn't occur in all areas. It occurs more commonly in certain countries. Some of these include Cuba, Haiti, Puerto Rico, India, and Pakistan. Now, the pathogenesis of this condition is believed to be as follows. There is an acute infection, and this acute infection, whatever this might be, causes enterocyte damage. Enterocytes are the cells that line the small intestine. So the enterocytes become damaged. There is subsequent bacterial overgrowth. So the normal gut flora starts to grow and multiply more. And then there's decreased ability to absorb nutrients. And with this decreased ability to absorb nutrients, we get other issues, including some signs and symptoms we're going to talk about a little later on. So now let's talk about the clinical features of tropical sprue. Now, it's interesting to note that tropical sprue has a similar clinical presentation to celiac disease, which is also known as celiac sprue. So I want to mention that here because it might help you with some of the clinical features of tropical sprue if you know celiac disease. Now, one of the most significant clinical features of tropical sprue is diarrhea. The diarrhea itself can either be acute or chronic, so it can last for a shorter period of time two weeks or less, or it can be chronic greater than four weeks. And it is a watery and smelly diarrhea. The reason patients will have diarrhea is because of the malabsorption we talked about before. So certain nutrients become malabsorbed. They enter into the large intestine. There is osmosis of water. Water will flow toward those undigested or unabsorbed nutrients. And this is going to cause watery diarrhea, watery stool. So this is a reason why we're going to see diarrhea in these patients. There's going to be abdominal pain. So because of the diarrhea, there's going to be abdominal pain. And this is described as a crampy pain. Another finding in tropical sprue is weight loss. So because of the diarrhea, because of the malabsorption of nutrients, there's going to be a weight loss. Patients are not going to be able to absorb nutrients as well as they should be able to. There's going to be bloating, so there's going to be gas production as bacteria within the gastrointestinal system digest those unabsorbed nutrients. And then as we mentioned before, a big component of tropical sprue that results in many of these symptoms is nutrient malabsorption. So what types of nutrients are commonly deficient in tropical sprue? These include vitamin B12 and folic acid. So these are common nutrients that are malabsorbed in tropical sprue. And because of the malabsorption of vitamin B12 and folic acid, there's going to be vitamin B12 deficiency and folic acid deficiency. And this is going to lead to anemia. It's going to be macrocytic anemia. So if there is malabsorption or deficiency of vitamin B12 and folic acid, there's going to be macrocytic anemia. And there's going to be symptoms and signs of anemia. These include fatigue, pallor, and in severe cases, there can be shortness of breath and other symptoms of anemia as well. If you want more information on signs and symptoms of anemia, please check out my lesson on that topic. Now, there are other features of tropical sprue that are also noted in patients. Some of these include glossitis, so an inflammation of the tongue. Chelitis, so chelitis or angular chelitis is dry, cracked lips. So it's usually at the angles of the lips. There's dry cracking of the lips. And inflammation, stomatitis, which is inflammation of the mouth, and pedal edema. Pedal edema is where your feet become swollen. There is interstitial fluid that is trapped within the feet. So all of these can be other features that can be found in tropical sprue. Now that we know those clinical features, how is tropical sprue diagnosed and treated? Clinicians diagnose tropical sprue 
by excluding other possible causes of the symptoms. So this is a diagnosis of exclusion. So first it's important to perform a stool culture. So stool culture looking at other potential causes of acute and chronic diarrhea. Some of these include Giardia lamblia and other organisms that could be causing some of the symptoms that we talked about in this lesson. Serological testing for celiac disease is also important. If you want more information, please check out my lesson on celiac disease. And then there can be other assessments looking at malabsorption. So some will look at how well a patient absorbs d xylose and some other ones will look at the stool to see how much fat content there is. So in tropical sprue, we do see steatorrhea. So fatty stool is common in tropical sprue. And then some other assessments are indicated. Endoscopy with biopsy is important. Again, to rule out other possible causes of tropical sprue, but also to look at the structure of the small intestine. So this is also very important. So with tropical sprue, with an endoscopy with biopsy, we do see villus atrophy. So the villi are the finger-like projections off the small intestine that increase surface area of the small intestine, allowing improved or increased absorption. So when there is atrophy of those villi, they become flattened, we lose surface area, and we lose our ability to absorb nutrients as well as we should. So in tropical sprue, there is villus atrophy that is noted on endoscopy. Another common finding in tropical sprue that is done on a CBC is macrocytic anemia. So macrocytic anemia is found and also associated vitamin B12 and folate deficiencies. And then from malabsorption studies, malabsorption of fat and D-xylose are found. So with all of those, after excluding other causes of symptoms and also seeing villus atrophy, macrocytic anemia, vitamin B12 and folate deficiencies and malabsorption of fat and D-xylose and having the patient be an inhabitant of one of those tropical areas we mentioned before or being a return traveler from one of those tropical areas, that is most often enough for a clinician to make the diagnosis of tropical sprue. But again, this is a diagnosis of exclusion so it's important to rule out other causes of symptoms. Now, how do clinicians treat this condition? It's important to provide vitamin B12 and folate supplementation, IV fluids, because patients lose a lot of fluids from this condition due to excessive diarrhea, and antibiotics are indicated for this condition. It's actually noted that tetracycline, oftentimes for a long period of time, three to six months, does seem to improve signs and symptoms of tropical sprue. This lends credence to the idea that this is caused by a bacterial infection. So again, this is a diagnosis of exclusion, exclude other causes. And from the workup, there are specific findings that are noted in tropical sprue. And then vitamin B12 and folate supplementation along with IV fluids and tetracycline for three to six months is the indicated treatment for this condition. If you want to learn more about other infectious diseases, please check my infectious disease playlist. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.